Hello, I'm Dan Alford. Welcome to the ARC Specialties Weld of the Week. On this week's Weld of the Week, we're going to investigate atomic hydrogen welding. 300 volts, hydrogen gas, what could go wrong? This really is an odd process. Being non-transferred, you can control heat by amps, volts, and torch standoff. It allows you to weld thick sections or even fine mesh screens. And the fact that it's gas shielded with hydrogen allows you to weld a wide range of materials. It's really a unique process even though it's 100 years old. Welding with atomic hydrogen is more like oxyacetylene welding. You have the torch in one hand and the rod in the other. The example we're showing here is for ground engaging wear. When parts rub directly against a rock, we have to coat it with something to prevent wear. One way to do this is with atomic hydrogen. We're using a tube borium rod, which has 60% tungsten carbide particles in a steel sheath. The steel becomes a matrix which holds these particles onto the rock bit. With atomic hydrogen, we can minimize the dilution or melting of these tungsten carbide particles and maximize the life of the part. Atomic hydrogen is an old and obsolete process. It's not even in the welding handbook any longer, but it has some historical value and some interesting features. It's one of only two processes which are non-transferred. That means you don't need a ground. The other one is non-transferred plasma. The arc is between two tungsten electrodes. We're running a constant current power supply. I think today I'm at around 20 amps, but we're at several hundred volts. And you control the arc length and the voltage with your hand. So you actually change this right here. There's two kinds of arcs, the silent arc, which is quiet, and then the welding arc, which is loud, and you can see a long fan shape. That fan shape is what gave arcs their name. You're probably familiar with the Jacobs ladder. We have a picture on the left side. On the right is the atomic hydrogen torch. But in the Jacobs ladder, you can see the fan shape of the electric arc between the two electrodes. It arches up into the air because heated air tends to rise and heated air conducts electricity. This is the origin of the term arc. This process was invented by Dr. Irving Lemur, a Nobel laureate working at GE over a hundred years ago. Dr. Lemur invented the process while he was working for General Electric in the early 1900s. He also coined the term pathological science. That's what happens when a scientist veers from the true scientific method and begins wishful data interpretation. This was the subject of one of his lectures on weird science. The characteristics of pathological science are results are very near the lower limits of detectability, and yet they're measured with extremely high accuracy. And the ratio of supporters to critics rises and then slowly falls. A good example of this was cold fusion in 1989, where they thought that they'd discovered a way to create fusion at room temperature. It was simply an example of pathological science. One unique feature of the atomic hydrogen process is this right here. This is the contactor button. When you press this button, it energizes the contactor. Once you establish the arc, it latches the contactor until you either press the stop button or you draw a long arc and extinguish the arc. Let me show you. This was the first gas shielded welding process, but rather than an inert gas, as we use nowadays, this was an active gas. It's pure hydrogen. Hydrogen is diatomic. It's H2 normally. The reason they call this process atomic hydrogen is in the arc it dissociates into monatomic hydrogen. And then when these monatomic hydrogen atoms hit the workpiece, they recombine, release a lot of heat. So the heat from the flame is negligible. Most of the heat is transferred due to the atomic hydrogen. To adjust the shielding gas flow rate on atomic hydrogen, you can't trust the flow meter. You have to do it by ear. Too little, just right. We look forward to posting new episodes of the ARC Specialties Weld of the Week. If you're one of the thousands of operators of ARC Specialties equipment around the world and you have a weld that you would like to showcase, please contact us. At ARC Specialties, we thrive on problems. Send us yours.